Hello, welcome to another edition of From the Bars to the Bricks, Prison Ministries Incorporated. I am your favorite felon, Kev. How is everyone doing this wonderful, blessed, blessed day? Hopefully just too good for words. Today, well, let's first start. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I want to hear from you. What? What is it that drives you? What is it that makes you just tick? What do you want to hear? How does this message resonate with you? All various ideas for comments. I really appreciate everybody. Thank you very much. Today we're going to be talking about love is not a feeling. Let me say that again. Love is not a feeling. We often just mistake that. So without further ado, let's just get on into today's lesson. Love is not a feeling. Personally, I always say, and it's not even personally, it's really, it's just the God's honest truth. Love is an action word. Love is a verb. Love is shown by our actions. How often you heard someone say, even said it yourself, I ought to do it, just don't feel like it. How often have you heard, we fell out of love, the feeling was just gone. Many things just seem exciting and fun at the beginning, but become chores later even our relationships, the thrill of a new project or a hobby phase of friendship or marriage seems just less and less fulfilling. When those feelings go away, our most common response is to stop doing what we were doing and give up on the friendship, the marriage, the job, whatever the case may be. On the other hand, when the feelings are strong, we'll do anything to make sure we keep them going. So how often have we heard people explaining what they did by saying, the feeling was right, or I just felt like it was the right thing to do. In our culture, strong feelings are used to justify just about every possible action, from angry words to spending money to we don't have to commit adultery. The phrase, I couldn't help myself, is used so often, it's become a cliche. For many of us, feelings dictate how we live our lives. We use them to motivate us. We use them to decide what we love, who we are, and what we should do. If they're strong, we'll do anything to keep them going. If they're weak, nothing can make us do anything. This can just seem like a very reasonable way to live since we are what we love we might say our feelings show us who we are some have even reasoned that since they want to do something they know that's wrong and that they must love it since they love it they might as well do it after all there's no point in pretending to be any better than we really are that's adding hypocrisy to our list of evils the reality is that our feelings don't always tell us what we love and therefore they should not be a factor in choosing what we do in our spiritual lives what we feel is not what we love loves do produce feelings and feelings do help us know what we love but they can also be misleading a feeling can be good yet come from a good or an evil love take a romantic passion for example it always feels good it comes from chaste love and expressed only within the bonds of marriage. That good feeling shows a good love. On the other hand, that same feeling could come from a horrible selfish desire. The feeling alone will not tell us which love gave rise to it. Similarly, a feeling of sadness may come from a good or bad love. A person can feel sad because a good love has been thwarted or because he's lost someone that he loves. Or he could be sad because an evil love has been foiled and he's pouting. 
it's just easy to see how far apart our loves and feelings often are when we are angry. Think about that time when you're angry with someone that you love very dearly. In that time of anger, you have made have felt like hurting that person, that you hated him. Maybe even you wished he was dead. But did that feeling of anger or hatred mean that you didn't love him anymore? Of course not. In an hour or even 15 minutes, the feeling was probably gone and you're ready to appreciate and even feel love for that person again. The love was there all along, but you were blind and deaf to it with your anger. While it's true that the presence of anger shows that you do not totally love that person, that's no big deal. It just means we aren't perfect. But we knew that already. <laughs> What's important for us to realize is that feelings don't necessarily show us what our overall love is. Several more problems arise from trying to see our lives from our feelings. The first is that there's no one-for-one -one ratio between feelings and loves. In other words, a strong love will not necessarily show itself as a strong feeling. A deeply held love, like the love of a child or the love of order, may not come to our conscious mind as anything other than a general feeling of contentment and a willingness to fight for something that needs our protection. On the other hand, a superficial love may just show itself as an impossible, overwhelming feeling. One which makes it impossible to concentrate on anything else. An ex example of this is sports. As we're in football season, Chiefs, go Chiefs. Hardly anyone has a deeply held love for sports. But when someone's favorite team loses, it can seem like the whole world collapses. Jacksonville fans yesterday, as the Chiefs beat them, I'm sure their world was just destroyed. But based on the feelings that he feels, you'd think the world was about to end. And to some people, it just really does seem like that. They get so wrapped up in the sports or something insignificant and really, in the end, unimportant. A second problem of trying to discover our loves by means of our feelings is that evil loves create proportionality, stronger feelings than good loves do. The reason for this is that we, the hells we try to make that feeling so important to us that it sweeps away all our rational thought, even all free will. They want that feeling to become so important that we will do anything to keep it go, going. Swedenborg once was allowed to feel what the love of dominating others is like and he said it was the most delightful feeling he'd ever had. What's more, it totally filled his mind. <clears throat> this is how the hells use feelings to manipulate and dominate us. The angels, on the other hand, offer us good feelings in a way that we can freely receive them or reject them as we wish. They don't want to dominate us with feelings. Here's a better way to find out what we really love. We need to look at what we do. What things do we make time for? What things form consistent patterns in our activities? What do we always do no matter how we feel? Love is not as much of a commitment, as much a feeling as it is a commitment. Love is not as much of a feeling as it is a commitment. Again, verb, action word. Two stories from the word can show us how love is commitment. One is when Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac at the Lord's command, even though it clearly hurts him. In the story, the Lord tells Abraham to give up your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. What the Lord asks Abraham to do is to make a commitment to him. Picture Abraham climbing up the mountain and then tying his son onto the altar. He must have felt terrible, but he was committed to the Lord. He did what his God asked rather than to obey his paternal feelings. Abraham's commitment to obey the Lord in spite of his feelings showed a greater love to the Lord than any feelings of devotion could. We can see that even more powerful example is principle in the Lord's Prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's probably the low point of the Lord's life on earth. 
he had been deserted by the whole human race. He was about to be destroyed or be deserted by his disciples, and he knew it. Even the angels had despaired and were telling him to give up on humanity. He was totally alone. He felt so bad that he even prayed to his father, to the soul within himself, to ask if he had to go through with the trials of the next day. Yet think of the words he said in this low point of his life. Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Think about that. Even during the most overpowering feelings of loss and loneliness, ones we can't even begin to imagine. The very question he asked to get out of his appointed task is qualified with the commitment to do what is right. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That total commitment to the salvation of each one of us is staggering. No one has ever felt more like giving up, and no one has ever gone on to give more in spite of his feelings. The closest we can get to doing what the Lord did is be willing to lay down our life, either physically or spiritually, for somebody else. The Lord said that this is the greatest love a person can do. Yet, to do it, we have to overcome the strongest feeling we have, which is the desire to preserve our own lives. No one feels like doing this. No one gets up in the morning and decides, man, I think I'm going to lay down my life for a friend today. But when a person or a cause is threatened, he sees the need for sacrifice and acts. True love acts on what it knows to be good rather than what it simply feels to be good. These loves which we develop by our commitments, or what can join us to the Lord. There are a group of passages in the word for the new church which state that we are conjoined to him by what we do. Once we see love as a commitment, these two statements become different ways of stating the same thing. When we feel destructive, anger, yet act fairly, we love fairness more than anger. When we control ourselves, when we feel like flirting or testing our power with the opposite sex, we love our spouse and the bonds of marriage more than adultery. On the other hand, when we feel love towards someone, but don't act kindly towards them, we do not love them. Or if we sit in the church every Sunday and feel close to Lloyd there, yet act selfishly in the rest of the week, we don't love the Lord, regardless of what we feel on Sunday. What we are committed to doing will always show us what we love more accurately than what we feel. This is a wonderful fact because we can all make ourselves do good deeds. But we have an extremely hard time making ourselves feel good things. So where does this leave our feelings since they should be have nothing to do with how we act? Are they just useless adornments the Lord's given us? Something we can't enjoy because we can't trust? The answer is that feelings are not made to show us our loves or to show us what to do. Our feelings serve two important uses. The first is to stimulate us to think about an issue. If a feeling comes up, we know some love must be active. That means we can, uh, need to evaluate what love is and see if it runs contrary to our commitments. If we feel a rush of anger coming in, it's a warning, either that the hells are attacking us or that we're feeling a strong desire to protect ourselves or someone we love. That feeling can stimulate us to decide what our commitments are. Similarly, we, if we feel the strong desire to hug someone, that feeling should prompt us to decide whether the setting is appropriate and if that would be the most useful thing to do for that person. Not everybody loves being hugged and touched and stuff. So we have to be aware of that. But feelings serve one far more important purpose. We see it from the word used to name feelings in the word for the new church. They are called delights. 
that word delights tells us how we are supposed to use our feelings. We're supposed to enjoy them, delight in them, accept them as a wonderful gift from our God to make our lives more enjoyable. Once we know that a feeling is from good love, the Lord wants us to enjoy it. Until we get to the point, though, where we can instinctively know whether feelings are good and bad. In other words, until we become among the very best of the angels. There's another way of judging them. While it's true that the hells are particularly good at manipulating our feelings, they have a much harder time manipulating our thoughts. Therefore, we can use our thoughts to judge our feelings. A simple way of doing that is to ask ourselves, if I follow this feeling out, does it lead me to do good? or evil things. If it leads us away from what we know is right, we should shun it, turn away. But if it does not, we should enjoy it, embrace it, even abandon ourselves to it. Using our feelings in this way frees them up to simply delight us. All feelings do come from loves, but we can't often tell if it's a good or a bad love. If we identify ourselves and our loves with what we feel, we give such a great victory to the hells because at times it can make us feel just about whatever they want. Although we cannot control feelings that flow into us, we control the lives we develop. If we can recognize that love is not a feeling but a commitment and that we choose to love something by deciding to do it no matter what we feel, we will negate hell's power. We will feel terrible at times, just as the Lord did while he was on earth. But more and more often, we will be able to rise above the strong feelings the hell's inspire within us. We will learn that love in the form of commitment and is more enduring and more powerful than any feeling we may have. This is wonderful. We discover the joy of allowing the good feelings the Lord has given us to delight us with their full power <laughs> you know all delights flow forth from love that is for that which a person loves he feels to be delightful no one has any delight from any other source from this is follows such love that is such a delight you know it just Man, I, I, love is an action word. Love should be expressed through our actions, through how we conduct ourselves, or how we treat people. How are we in our minds? Do we know what is good loves and what are bad loves? Can we discern those? You know, Another way, and one of the most important ways, is talk to God about it. Do like Jesus did. Pray. We can learn from his example. Prayer brings fellowship with God. That is our friendship. That's our conversations. Just like any other friend we talk to on a regular basis or love. We need to conversate with him. Talk to him through prayer. Through just conversation. He's there. He's there for us always. He's there to help us. You know, I, I don't know, I just, <laughs> it's granted me to feel the quality of the delight of ruling from the love of self and also how great it is. I was let into it that I might know this. It was such as to surpass all the delights that are in the world. It was such a delight, possessing the whole mind from its inmost things to its outermost. But in the body, it was felt as something pleasant and agreeable with a feeling of elation in the breast. It also granted me to perceive that from this delight, from their fountain head, there are issued delights of evils of all kinds, such as adulteries, revenge, fraud, slander, drugs, and evil doing in general. Let us be better followers of Christ. Let us be better people in that we show love and we want to help people. 
we want to guide people. We want to express our Lord and how he acts through our love. We want to show that we are all followers of Christ and that we can show his love. Let's close with prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this awesome, awesome message of how love, it's not just a feeling, but it's what we do. For what we love is what we make time for and what we do. Please, Lord, let us focus that love, not on feelings, but as of things that are genuine and true. Let us put our feelings of hate aside and just feel nothing but feelings of love. Let us not give way to the temptations of the hells. Lord Jesus, I bless each and every person listening, watching today, not listening and watching today, who will never listen or watch. Lord, I ask that you watch over all of us as we love and try to show your love to others. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for watching, for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I want to hear from you. You guys see on this uh, ticker, there's a link to get merch, stuff like the mug, the data. From the bars to the bricks mug and some other stuff uh shirts hats all sorts of stuff iphone cases and everything um go check it out all proceeds 100 percent of all profits are going to the scholarships of an incarcerated to a child of an incarcerated parent so it's all going towards a good cause help support the ministry help support a kid that may not otherwise get that chance to go on to college thank you very much I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. God bless. I'm Kev and I'm out.